Davis Law Firm. More football stars from San Antonio have a chance to make it at the next level. Former Steel Knight and Texas A&M quarterback Jalen Jones is one of the hundreds of prospects in the 2023 draft that starts tomorrow night. The Steel Knight, great, is one of the biggest corners in the draft. He's 6'2", weighs 205 pounds. He was rated a five-star prospect by 247 Sports coming out of high school. Didn't take long for him to see action as a freshman with the Aggies in 2020, and now he's about to go pro. He's being projected by several mock drafts to go anywhere between rounds two and five. And then there's tight end Ben Sims, another area player eligible for the draft. The Clark High School graduate played five seasons for the Baylor Bears. He played in 42 career games with 78 receptions for 785 yards, 12 touchdowns. He's 6'5", 254. The Green Bay Packers, who have a massive need at tight end, hosted Sims earlier this month. NFL.com projects Sims as a priority free agent. And the Dallas Cowboys are fantastic at drafting offensive linemen. Last year with the 24th overall pick, they selected Tyler Smith, an offensive tackle from Tulsa. Some fans didn't like the move, but he had a solid rookie season playing left tackle after Tyron Smith got hurt in training camp. They could pull off another move like that tomorrow night with the 26th overall pick. One thing we do know, Stephen Jones covets those offensive linemen. You can't have enough of those guys, and that's why, you know, we do put a premium on draft from Connor McGovern struggled with an injury most of the year. Now he's, you know, he battled through it, but you know, you, you can't get enough. And that's why it's great to have a guy like, well, let's go sitting there the balls of the world sitting there. Uh, and while we would be, you know, very open, uh, you know, to drafting another young one to have him coming along. And now that Aaron Rodgers was traded to the Jets, Cowboys Dak Prescott, believe it or not, is the longest tenured starting quarterback with one team. He's the only quarterback who's been starting for the same team for the last six seasons. As of right now, you won't have to wait long to see who the Texans select with their first pick. It is the second overall pick tomorrow night. For months, it was assumed that they would draft one of two quarterbacks in Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud, whichever one is still available. After the Panthers picked first, it looks like they're going to take Bryce Young. But there's growing talk that they could pass on a quarterback and select a defender instead. Some feel it's a smoke screen to cover their true intentions of snagging one of those quarterbacks. That said, there's going to be a lot of pressure on whomever is taking second. Ryan talked about relieving some of that high pick pressure. I let him know from the start there's no pressure. <laughs> That's it. You know, I'm not putting pressure on a guy like to come in and and just because where you're picked in the draft, it's unfair to say that a guy is the leader of an organization and he hasn't played one snap for our team. Well, that'll make it easier on the guy. All right, so with a footprint of approximately 3.1 million square feet, the 2023 NFL Draft in Kansas City is going to be the biggest event site in the 87-year history of the NFL Draft. And you can see the first round coming up tomorrow night live right here on KSAT 12 starting at 7 o'clock. Remember, the Texans right now pick second, so you won't have to wait long. I know where you'll be. Mm -hmm. For the first time ever, Ever. There is a medication targeting ALS that has FDA approval. How this drug works, we'll have that in the next half hour. And it's going to be a doggone good time <laughs> with Fiesta Aww. Vibe downtown. SA Live. Not going to be a rough day for them at all, is it? Rough. We'll be Look back. At that. That's not a dog. Uh, not, well, yeah, it could be. <laughs> Our border continues to pour in migrants, so much so that in Brownsville, the local police department had to be called in this week to help Border Patrol. It's estimated that more than 2,000 migrants crossed the Rio Grande near Brownsville just this week. Right now, the local officers are helping Border Patrol maintain control of the area. They're also helping to direct migrants into designated areas so they can be processed. The majority of those who have crossed, 70 percent or so, are from Venezuela. The increase in border crossings comes ahead of Title 42. That's set to expire next month. For us to be this busy, especially at a time right before the sunset of Title 42, is very concerning for me as the chief. We are now averaging about 1,000 migrants a day crossing through areas like Brownsville, Texas. Title 42 has been in effect since March of 2020 because of COVID. It returns migrants to their home country. But once it expires, migration is expected to increase from what we're seeing now significantly. A new proposal from the USDA aims to make chickens safer to eat. It's part of an effort to prevent salmonella infections. 
The Centers for Disease Control says about 1.3 million people in the U.S. get sick from salmonella every year. Nearly a quarter of infections are attributed to eating poultry. The new rule could declare salmonella an adulterant, a substance that ends up in a product when it's being made or that is unlisted as an ingredient. It would apply to breaded, stuffed raw chicken products like pre-made foods found in stores freezer section like chicken cordon bleu. The agency listing listening to public comments about the proposal for the next 60 days. If you're like a lot of people and you're taking sleep aid supplements with melatonin, beware. There's new research out that shows that some products might have too much melatonin in them. In a letter published in a medical journal, researchers are saying they tested 25 products. They were all labeled as melatonin gummies. That's a hormone that helps to regulate sleep. According to researchers, 88% of these gummies tested were labeled inaccurately. One of the products actually contained 347% more melatonin than what was listed on the label. Researchers also found that some of the products tested had CBD, which is found in cannabis. The amounts of the CBD were also mislabeled. That massive toxic, toxic train derailment in Palestine, Ohio, cost Norfolk millions of dollars. Remember, it happened back in February. The company attributes the nearly $400 million loss in profit to the train derailment. The disaster caused evacuations and massive cleanup efforts. Norfolk Southern has committed nearly $31 million in compensation and support to that community. That is just a fraction of what the company continues to make, though. The federal credit card about to go over its limit again. Republican lawmakers warning that the U.S. could default on its debt as soon as June. A trio of new analysis shows a number of factors, including the fact that tax receipts are running much weaker than expected so far this season. Without that and some other extraordinary measures, the government will not be able to pay its bills in full and on time until lawmakers raise or suspend the debt ceiling again. If collections are enough to keep the coffers flush through early June, it's likely the government won't actually default until a little later in the summer. That's because another round of tax payments are due on June 15th. The Food and Drug Administration has granted accelerated approval for Biogen's ALS drug Tofersen. This is the first medication that targets a genetic cause of ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It'll be administered through a spinal injection. The FDA said a clinical study showed the drug is likely to offer some benefits to patients. However, the agency is requiring that Biogen continue to test the drug in people to make sure it works. ALS is a rapidly progressive fatal neuromuscular disease that typically leads to paralysis and respiratory failure within three years of the symptom onset. There is currently no cure or effective treatment for ALS. Let's take another look outside with live cam. More sun showing now, less clouds, Sarah. Yeah, clouds and sunshine, a mixture. So clouds will come and go throughout the remainder of the afternoon. And speaking of this afternoon, meteorologist Mia Montgomery and I will be at Bob Mills giving out 200 Fiesta Weather Authority medals. So here's the thing, the line starts at 4 p.m. and medals are handed out at 6 p.m. We've got a limited number to give away, but we hope to see you there. Right now outside, you can see that we've got some of those clouds and sun at 78 degrees, south winds at 15 miles per hour, high humidity. It's very humid out there. And this afternoon, it's going to be toasty. Temperatures well above average by some five degrees. 87 in San Antonio, but it's going to be 90 in Poteet and in Pleasanton. 82 in Seguin, 85 in Hondo, and 83 in Bandera. We've got some very light showers moving in from the coast, passing and going in here. This afternoon, we'll only have a 10 to 20% chance of an isolated downpour. But this system that's currently working its way through the panhandle of Texas, bringing severe weather to Dallas Fort Worth, this cold front is going to move through tonight. So overnight tonight into tomorrow, we're going to see our rain chances go up mainly in the overnight hours while most of us are sleeping. I'll be back to show you the future cast and what you can expect for the rest of Fiesta coming up in a few minutes. David Ursula. No rain for Fiesta, please. Fiesta and food, though, they go hand in hand no matter what the weather is. We're testing our Fiesta food knowledge, or lack of it, after the break. A 
As you very well know, the Fiesta season in full swing. All right, we're going to test our Fiesta food knowledge. Oh, no. Okay. We should have, we're wearing our flower crowns. We, we should have, I should have gotten it. That's okay. okay. All right, everyone loves chicken on a stick. Uh huh. But just how many of them does the city eat during the Fiesta season? Mm. A, 100,000 chicken on a sticks. B, 43,000. C, 22,000. D, 32,000. Or is it I'm gonna go sticks with, of chicken? I'm going to go with B. B, B. 43,000? I'm going with B. You're, you're just going to follow her? <gasps> ah, a little less. I mean, apparently, I haven't eaten enough. Come on, y'all. Chicken's good for you. <laughs> yeah, it is. Of course, San Antonio has the best tacos. We know that. And they're easy to find during Fiesta. That means tortillas. How many tortillas are consumed during Fiesta events? According to the Fiesta Commission, you got 25,000, 47,000, 51,000. 200. I'm going to go. I'm going with C. Going with C? Yeah. I think C. I think there's a lot of oh, oh, man. People aren't as hungry as we think they are. Apparently. All right. All That's right. Not. I'm with that. All right. Nyosa, very popular, especially for foodies. How many pounds of beef do Ooh. Nyosa crowds eat each year, according to the Conservation Society? 1,700, 17,000 pounds. <laughs> B, 12,000 pounds. C, 23,000 pounds. Or D, 60,000 pounds okay, and see. I'm going to go with A this time. I'm going with B because they've all been low numbers so far. They have been. I'm going to go with C. Yes. Ah. Ah. That means I am winning so far. You That's are. the most important. You, she's, she's the only <laughs> one on the board. <laughs> all right. How many pounds of guacamole do Nyosa crowds eat Ooh. each year? Ooh. A, 725,000, 125, 725. There you go. I can read. 2,000, 1,000, or 900. Oh, it's got to be the biggest. It's got to be 2,000 pounds of guacamole. I'm going to go with D, 900. I'll go with D. Ooh. The one we didn't choose. So we, get, we got four questions, and we only got one right, and it was Sarah, you. Sarah, so. you are a brainiac uh, when it comes to food compared I, to us. I guess I got one. So all I know is it's all good. One's so. better than none, my friend. That's all you gotta yeah. know. It's all good. All right. I was trying to think of a weather trivia off the top, but I can't really. Here's something I do know is that the aquifer is up uh, two tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. And here's some good news. You know, molds, pecan, pine, and grass are low in the pollen count, but there is no oak in the pollen count. That is great news. Now, coming up, we're going to talk about a few things. This afternoon's going to be warm and humid, but we do see a few stray showers out there. I'll show you the radar. Then overnight, a cold front will be moving through, bringing a broken line of storms. Some of those could be on the stronger side. And then finally, for the rest of the week, we're going to have a nice Thursday and a nice Friday, but I do have to talk about the potential for storms Friday night whether or not that may impact some of the Fiesta festivities on Saturday. Details coming up. Well, I do know one thing. I know where it's not going to rain today at all. Where? At Bob Mills. Oh, hey. Because <laughs> you know why. you got the inside track there. Yeah. We're going to be out there. Yeah. Um, Mia and I will be out there. Mm -hmm. Bob Mills. Line starts at 4. Medal's given away at 6. Fiesta Weather Authority medal. It's the last chance to get your hands on one, so keep that in mind. Right now outside, we have got a mixture of sun and clouds. It is 78 degrees outside. Winds are from the south at about... 15 miles per hour, so we do have a bit of a breeze, but those south winds are bringing in that humidity. You can feel it out there, and it is warm outside today. Temperatures well on their way into the 80s around San Antonio. It's 78 right now, but it's 84 in Pleasanton, 85 in Cachula, 81 in Del Rio, and 79 in Kerrville. Let's go ahead and take a look here closer to San Antonio. I love this view because you can see the wispy cirrus clouds, which are higher in the atmosphere moving from west to east and at the same time you can see the puffy cumulus clouds which are lower moving in from the gulf so this just shows you the different levels of our atmosphere it's really cool it's 82 though at Stinson, 81 at port sa 80 in new Braunfels, and 78 in bandera it is so humid outside these dew points are at the top of the scale near 70 degrees that is a summertime dew point so think about the summer when you're hot when it's hot and humid outside this kind of humidity is here with us today, and we're actually seeing a few of these summer like stray showers moving through as well, mainly to the east and uh, south of San Antonio, near to Goliad, Cuero, Hallettsville, Lavaca County. But a little bit closer to San Antonio, we have seen passing showers at times. In fact, one just moved through China Grove toward I 10, and then there's another shower from Lavernia that's pushing up to New Berlin as well. In this afternoon, in the afternoon here we are going to carry a 10 to 20 percent chance for an isolated downpour 
kind of like yesterday where we had a brief interruption of Nyosa with those isolated downpours, but the highest rain chances are going to be east of San Antonio and north of San Antonio. By about the later afternoon, we'll have a 20% chance for a downpour, but it's not until overnight tonight that this front is going to move through and bring us our best chance for rain while most of us are sleeping. So in your case, that 12 hour forecast this afternoon will be warm and humid 87 for the high temperature right around four or five o'clock. Some places will get into the low 90s today and then later on tonight. If you're planning on heading out to Nyosa or just out and about enjoying uh, your evening, know that there's a 20% chance for a stray downpour. We really see those rain chances pick up though after midnight tonight. Uh, highs are going to be in the 90s, 93, uh, pardon me, 90s south west of San Antonio, 93 in Catula, 89 in Del Rio, 90 in Pleasanton, 87 in San Antonio. Then with that front moving through, here's where our rain chances start to pick up. This is a look at midnight tonight into tomorrow. You can see that initially we'll see some storms develop across the hill country as that front moves through. And then that front will be moving through San Antonio close to two, three o'clock in the morning. That's when we'll have the greatest coverage, about 50 to 60%. Some of these storms could be on the stronger side. It is that time a year we might hear some smaller hail mixed in with the storms but keep in mind most people uh, even though a lot of us will see rain some folks will not see rain but a lot of us will be hearing some thunder in the overnight hours so if you're a light sleeper if you've got some kids who are light sleepers just know prepare for that ahead of this evening and then early tomorrow morning we could have some lingering rain into the early morning commute but by the mid morning things are going to clear out and Thursday is going to be a beautiful day with low humidity so when we look at the rain chances just to reiterate again the highest chances are after midnight in San Antonio tomorrow isolated rain in the morning, but then things clear out and it'll be a lovely day with a high of 80 with low humidity. Then we're paying attention on Friday because Battle of Flowers itself should be great in the morning. Just a little cloudy, a little humid. We'll see some sun in the afternoon and it'll be warm. But Friday night into Saturday, we have another round of storms and the timing here is uh, fluctuating a little bit into late Friday night, early Saturday morning. So even though Fiesta Flambeau should be OK, uh, King William Fair in the morning will be watching to see if we still have some showers. Of course, we'll continue to update the forecast for you throughout the remainder of Fiesta and into your weekend as well. We'll be right back after the break. She is able to relate to the students and it shows. Students at Woodlake Hills Middle School say they look forward to their class with Monique Jackson. Monique is a CTE teacher or career technology and education teacher at Judson ISD and our case that crew had a chance to surprise her with this month's Educator of the Month Award. Educator of the Month, brought to you by First Mark Credit Union. Perfect. Once you do that, go ahead and click Join Class. You're able to relate to the kids. So, I, of course, I can tell them the things that I went through and try to help them to not make those same mistakes. Just having fun with them, being able to sit by me, we have conversations. Raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if you've ever heard of Canva. CTE teacher Monique Jackson has been teaching with Judson ISD for 10 years and she's been at Woodlake Hills Middle School for three years now. And in that time, she has had quite an impact on her students. She's one of the teachers that understands you, like you can tell her anything and like she won't judge you for it. She'll just like understand and try to help you through it. She's a good teacher. She's very nice. She's a very good listener. If you have any like problems at home or at school, you just come to her and she'll help you out with anything. Monique Jackson also shows her support to her students by going to their games. I like to come to some of the students' games when I can and just show that support. Sometimes they may not have mom and dad to go to those games, so I'll be there rooting for them and cheering them on. So it's also exciting for me as well. Yes, join your class through the email. Sign and Monique helps her fellow teachers too. During the pandemic, she created a YouTube channel to help other teachers with technology issues. And now she's running Wildcat News TV on a YouTube channel for her students. All reasons why she's being recognized as KSET's Educator of the Month. Congratulations! Congratulations. <laughs> I'm proud of my, my teacher. Ms. Jackson my favorite teacher. To be honest, I think she deserves it 100%. She really tries her hardest and she's always prepared for her classes. And she knows how to organize her assignments very well. It's actually an honor and a privilege. You don't expect things like this to happen. You see it on TV all the time, but when it's you, it's like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> so I'm very grateful for this opportunity and blessed. 
Congratulations, Ms. Jackson. Well deserved. All right, let's take it downtown. The party continues. Oh. Mike's got his cooking gloves on, so we don't. Oh yes, we do. <laughs> Wait to see what we are cooking. I know it's either you're going to cook or you're going to mine something. So. Something. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, it is beautiful down here. We have got our medals on, and our medal giveaway today is so secret. Uh -huh. We don't even see Jen right we, now. We don't even no. know where she is. And okay, and yeah. we won't find out till you do. And they are so rare. She has one. I don't. I know. I may have a few, Ooh. but I do have ours. You do have your <laughs> ours. Okay. Look what we are cooking. Yes, it is chicken on a stick. Oh, it's and such a good day. Look at that right there. And we've got JJ Gonzalez, Mr. Chicken himself here. And he is going to pop those right in, right? Well, he is. Yeah. Right? Okay, and of course, chicken on a steak, incredibly popular. Absolutely. The number one fiesta food, yes. Number one. Fiesta. It is its own food group, according to Guinness World Book of Records. That's I right. just made that up, but hey, what the heck? I don't <laughs> 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 All right. We and also we also have fantastic pooches on parade today. I can't wait to see the cuteness. Wait till you see their floats and their outfits. Because, of course, the Pooch Parade is coming up on Saturday. And, of course, we want to see your pictures of your Pooches all dressed up for Fiesta. And we've got some delicious cocktails as well to help uh, wash down that chicken on a stick. And, of course, laughs with Coleto Rodriguez. We'll fill you in. All that and more when SA Live continues in just Yay! a few.